In this video, we'll go over how multicast works on the WLC uh, and the wired side of the network. Let's say the multicast source in this case is the server uh, on VLAN C at the remote site. And let's say that the clients that require the VLAN, uh, the, the traffic are connected to the Wi Fi on VLAN 50 and 70, respectively, in the local and remote site. The first step is that the access points will join the multicast group configured on the controller. This is assuming we're using multicast multicast mode, which is the recommended one. We configure this IP address on the controller tab, and once we, we do that, the access points will send an IGMP join to that IP address via VLAN 30. Why? So they can receive any encapsulated multicast traffic from the controller. Because the access points are not on the same VLAN than the controller, we will need PIM to route layer three multicast traffic between the access point and the controller VLAN. This means we need to enable PIM on every interface in the path, okay, between the access points and the controller. Let's, for example, on the switch from the left, the multicast configuration will be as follows. Configure multicast routing, then enable it on interface VLAN 20, which is the controller management VLAN, the pink VLAN, and then interface VLAN 30, which is the access point management VLAN. Once we do this, uh, on the remote side, we'll configure VLAN 30 and enable multicast routing as well, which is the access point VLAN. Okay, what's the issue here? Okay, the issue is that Multicast traffic is configured between the controller and management VLAN, access point management VLAN over here, but we're missing all this part from the remote side. So if you have a scenario like this, you may receive multicast traffic on only a few access points, only the access points on the on the, on the local side instead of the remote side. Okay, that will be that a, a kind of symptom that this is the issue. So in order to carry the multicast traffic between the controller and the access points, we need to make sure that PIM routing is enabled between the controller management interface and the access points management interfaces. In order to do this, we'll need to enable PIM on all the interfaces that are marked with, with a circle in the path. Okay, once we do this, is we enable, in this case, we're using PIM sparse mode and we'll enable it on all the interfaces in the path, meaning the VLAN A on the switch of, of the left, all the gig, gigabit Ethernet interfaces between the routers, and then VLAN B on the switch, which is in the remote switch, which is the upstream link, and then the access point VLAN. Okay. Once we have that, the multicast traffic from the controller should be able to reach the access points. However, we're missing one more thing here. When, once PIM is enabled between the controller and the access points, that means that every traffic that the controller receives, it will be able to be sent to the access points. However, if in order for the controller to send that multicast traffic, it needs to receive it. So in this case, our multicast source is the server on the on the right, on VLAN C. So if we want the, tr the multicast traffic from VLAN C to reach the controller, we need to enable PIM on that interface as well. So it can be routed towards the controller. Otherwise, the controller just doesn't have any traffic to forward. Now that we know the multicast is configured, let's see how the whole flow of, of the multicast traffic is. So it, it becomes clear. Then, as, as no one asks of the traffic the server is sending, the server is sending traffic to 239.12.12.12, the switch is dropping the traffic. Okay? Then let's say the clients on VLAN 50 and 70 are requesting the multicast traffic. They will send an IGMP join to the multicast group. The access points will receive that IGMP join packet or membership report and will encapsulate it in CapWeb. And it will be sent via unicast from the controller, from the access points to the controller. So the source of that packet will be the access point IP, the destination is the controller IP. It's a CapWeb packet encapsulated in the original multicast frame. Because the controller has IGMP snooping enabled, now it knows the clients on VLAN 50 and VLAN 70 need the traffic. So he will create an MGID, multicast group ID, for uh, each of those combinations. I will set for an IGMP uh, membership report on those VLANs. So it starts receiving the traffic. 
So it will it will send the IGMP membership report on both VLAN 50 and VLAN 70 unless you have the multicast VLAN feature enabled on the SS80. If you have multicast VLAN feature, let's say you just set it over there to VLAN 50, then the controller will only send the IGMP join on VLAN 50. This will prevent the controller from re receiving duplicate copies of the same traffic and then forwarding them to the APs and then the APs forwarding them over the air. Okay, so it's a more efficient way to use it. It's only it'll, it only makes sense when you have interface groups or when you have AAA override, okay, doing VLAN uh, override on the clients. Okay, in this case, we're not, we will not use uh, multicast VLAN feature. So the controller will send an IGMP membership report on I, or IGMP join to the 239.12.12.12 group on VLAN 50 and 70, okay? Now the switch knows the IGMP, uh, that the controller needs to receive traffic or someone on that port needs to receive traffic on VLAN 50 and VLAN 70. You will be able to see that by doing show IP IGMP snooping groups. Also, because this switch is running PIM, it will ask its neighbors uh, if, if dense mode is the one being used to, to receive that traffic. So it will be basically say, hey, PIM neighbors, send me any traffic you receive for 239, 12, 12, 12. At this point, the controller is not receiving any traffic. The switch is not receiving any traffic because uh, all the devices in the path still don't know that there is a receiver on that port. Then the process will repeat. Uh, across the whole t all PIM neighbors and this is why you need to have PIM enabled on all the interfaces in the path because if one of the uh, links is missing the PIM configuration then that message of hey I need the traffic for that group will not get to the destination and then the multicast traffic flow will be broken once the traffic reaches the switch the switch says hey yeah I'm receiving traffic from this guy so here it is it will, it will start floating it over the links where PIM is enabled and where it's received the PIM uh, join, okay? So the process will receive, uh, will repeat over, over all the links, okay? You can verify this with a show IP Ambro. You will see uh, the IP address of the remote server, comma, the, uh, the group IP address, and then on the outgoing interfaces list, you'll see the interfaces from where we're sending the, the towards the one we're sending the multicast traffic. Once the traffic reaches the switch, the, say, the switch says, hey, my outgoing interface list of the show IP and rope says I need to send the, this traffic through VLAN 50 and VLAN 70. However, VLAN 50 and VLAN 70 are, are local on that switch. So it will say, okay, over which ports, because I have IGMP. Now it's not layer three forwarding, but it's layer two. So it will check its IGMP table and will check which ports require that multicast traffic it will notice that VLAN 50 and VLAN 70 on the port channel towards the controller uh, need that traffic. So it will basically send that traffic towards, the, uh, towards that interface on those two VLANs. The controller will receive the multicast packet and will send it, okay, for each MGID, which is basically created for the VLAN and SSID combination. It will send the same a frame twice, but with the destination of 239.1.1.1. Be why? Because that's a multicast address you have configured. So at this point, the packet looks like this. The, there is an outer header, which is the WLC management IP as the source, and the destination is the WLC multicast group that you have configured. And the original a packet from the server to the multicast address is, is uh, encapsulated. Okay, so the devices will forward that multicast traffic based on the outer header, which in this case is CAPWAP. The switch says, uh, again, it checks its show IP M route and it will say, hey, yeah, my algo interface list for 239.1.1.1 says that I should send that traffic through VLAN 30 with, because they will receive an IP, IGM, IGM, IP IGMP join or membership report from the APs for that group on VLAN 30. But we also receive the IGMP join through VLAN A, right? Because there is an AP on a remote side that send that, that IGMP join and it reached the switch uh, through VLAN A. So the switch, the switch will send that traffic uh, on those two links, okay? And this traffic, we mean the, the original multicast packet went from the server to the controller, now it got encapsulated inside a CAPWA packet and then it's going backwards to the AP. Then it, the, the process is repeated 
on all the routers, they will check the show IP M route and will send that, that packet or that traffic on the outgoing interfaces. Uh, once it reaches the switch, it will say VLAN 30 and the traffic will get to the AP. At this point, the AP will take out the will will strip off the cap web header and will forward the original frame to the client. And that's how multicast work on wireless. Okay? The original packet is no cap web header and then it's the server IP from the remote side to the multi to the original multicast address. For more information, don't forget to visit our blog at wrscci.com. Thank you.